start the party and your ear holes there. It might be a good idea. It might be a good idea. No good. Out. Darren Carter, party starter. Pocket party podcast. And your ear holes. Hurry up. Love you, buddy. Thanks for being on. All right. <laughs> Dude, it's like one in the morning. I hope your neighbors huh? I hope your neighbors are used to this. I got a drum set, man. They've heard worse. <laughs> I don't like their dog. Anything you want to say in closing? Yeah, I don't like their dog. That was my closer. <laughs> come back, will you? Yeah. We it's want my to, house. Of course to, I will. Oh, yeah, come. <laughs> exactly. I'm inviting him back and I'm in his home. He's like, get the hell out of here. <laughs> Let's go get some hash browns. All right, good. Pocket party. And we're back. Hey, everybody. Again, thank you for tuning in to the Pocket Party Podcast. Did I just hang up on my guest? That was really weird. Darren Carter, the party starter, Pocket Party Podcast, calling Mr. Mike Black right here, right now. We're going to start a party in your ear holes. Hello. Hey, how's it going? (laughs) It's going good. Did I just hang up on you? I don't think so. It rang once and then hung up that was weird okay maybe that was just like something hey but you're here now how is it how is your halloween uh <laughs> i think it went really well <laughs> <laughs> so guys listen to this they uh my computer is in the shop so normally i record these upload them that day right now we're just having blind faith i'm like let's record it my computer's in the shop I'm going to go perform at the Laugh Factory in San Diego, and when, hopefully when I get back, the computer will be out of the shop, and this will be uploaded. And uh, But I think the thing is, we were supposed to do a Halloween special podcast, and uh, this may not go up until the like actual Halloween, <laughs> like the day of Halloween. Yeah, and that'll be fine. Get everyone ready for trick-or-treating. Yeah, unless my computer and, takes uh, longer, then it'll be like, hey, dude, how was your Thanksgiving? <laughs> yeah. Let's, let's not let's plan for victory rather than exactly exactly we'll just stack like yeah. a bunch of podcasts together and just cover all the holidays now darren i'm gonna ask you a, yeah. i'm gonna turn the tables here and ask you a question you're of the of the friends i have and you can take this as a compliment or an insult <laughs> you're probably the the biggest goody two shoes i know oh <laughs> are, yeah are you the type <laughs> that gives kids uh, toothbrushes and toothpaste at Halloween. Oh, that's funny. Um, I uh, I don't, but I no, I don't do I that. Think, yeah. I personally think that ought to be a, a hanging offense. <laughs> yeah, like, exactly. Right. You ought to just or or apples or celery. Anything. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Would, like, hey, you kids got to get on the right track, and I'm just yeah, the guy to do care. it for you. No, no, I wouldn't do it. That I would. Um, in fact, I saw someone do that. I was reminded of this yesterday. The, you know, they uh, there was some Girl Scouts selling Girl Scout cookies by the local grocery store sure. one year, and I remember this guy was just laying into him and like, you know, like, and then the father. <laughs> Yeah, for selling. Illegal. Yeah, for selling cookies, and then the 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 dad was like, "Hey, come on! They're the Girl Scouts. They're trying to raise money for their." And the, and then the guy was like, "Why are you guys peddling this this sugar? It's bad for your body. It's not <laughs> good." Peddling sugar. Yeah, he was just really late. And the guy go, and then the dad was like, "He was like, dude, he goes, it's it's a wholesome thing. It's like I have diabetes." And then the the guy just cut him off, and he goes, "Then you should know better." And I was just like, "Man, can't the kids just sell Girl Scout cookies?" It's like, jeez, I you know. If it was adults, if it was like Lady Scout cookies or something like that, I Dude. could see having a beef with them. Yeah. yeah. You ladies quit selling these cookies. You, you're, you're 45 years old. You should know better. <laughs> right. But these kids didn't broker the deal with the cookie company. It's, you know, they, right. they're, they don't have anything else to sell. Lemonade, that's got twice as much sugar as cookies, you know? Yeah, and it, I mean, come on, it's, it's, it's you know. It's like, of the stuff kids can sell, you know, that's pretty much it. Cookies or lemonade, you know? Right. Yeah, and it's like everything in moderation, am I right? It's like, you know, right. I mean, you know, you, do, you eat the Girl Scout. I mean, look, I say that, and then I, I have eaten a whole sleeve, so. <laughs> yeah, but they're not forcing you to. They didn't, you know. Right. They're, they're, and they sell them at a crazy price, like, five bucks a box if you're ODing on girl scout cookies you might have too much money right you and, know they're 
that's not the point. It's the fundraiser part of it is, you know, exactly. It's like the kids that sell the, you know, uh, chocolate bars that are like a dollar, you know, that uh, I guess that used to be outrageous. Now that's a bargain, (laughs) you know, uh, (laughs) you can get one for that price. Yeah. You know, what we've done is a lot of times, well, my, uh, my wife, I don't want to take credit. She'll buy like, you know, 50 bucks worth of girl scout cookies or whatever from Mm -hmm. one of the, you know, parents. And then, and she'll give them to me, and then I'll just pass them out. Like, I'll go to different comedy clubs and be like, you want Girl Scout cookies? And I think at first, the way I was phrasing the question, I think people thought I was selling them. Uh-huh. And I was like, no, no, I'm giving them to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You didn't know like that. I'd be like, what? <laughs> you know, like, you want Girl Scout cookies? Because I got extras. I'm, I'm giving them away. I made sure I said that. Like, not. <laughs> <laughs> that would be such a. I wouldn't put it past a comic to do that. <laughs> yeah. To like, I'm going to upsell these Girl Scout cookies. I'm going to flip them. Yeah. For, you know, I bought them for five. I'm going to sell them for seven or whatever. Exactly. Guys, I'll be selling my merch and Girl Scout cookies. You know, like. That's, that's a Johnny Sanchez type move. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Dude, there was a guy that was so lazy uh, one year in, a, in our building. He, um, he was a single dad. He had a lot of motorcycles and like just all kinds of vehicles, man. Like like I had like, he told me a story one day, not that I asked, but he was like, yeah, I'm divorced and I'm living over here, but I, you know, I love my, you know, uh, so he, he had like, the, I'm telling you, he had like anything you'd want, like motorcycles, dirt bikes, vans, like sport cars. Yeah. And he, uh, he had it all. He had a law, yeah. <clears throat> like, not that I'd want that, but it was just interesting. I'd be like, oh, wow, it's, the guy always has a different vehicle. And uh, I noticed you one... You don't want a motorcycle? Well, when I saw the motorcycle, it did take me back to my childhood because I used to have a Suzuki 185 dirt bike. And uh, not childhood, but like teenage years. <laughs> and so I was right. like, oh, that's so cool. <clears throat> but when, you, you know, when you're leading your double life as Tahoe Joe, yeah, he's exactly. going to need a, a vehicle. Yeah. You definitely need a motorcycle yeah. for him. I know, right? <laughs> Tahoe Joe with the two mirrors on each handlebar. That's right. That's what makes my <laughs> Suzuki legal. That's what it was. It was a, it was a one. Uh, uh. Yeah, that dirt bike was legal, man. It was. Uh, you could you could take it on the on the freeways of Fresno at least. <laughs> and uh, you, you, uh, <laughs> the freeways of Fresno. Yeah. Hey, that's that'll be the name of our our side project. The freeways of Fresno. <laughs> Tahoe, Tahoe Joe, Joe and, and Mike the Black. The freeways of Fresno. <laughs> yeah. And Mike Black ride again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll have a motorcycle with a sidecar. Either you'll be in the sidecar yeah. or I'll be in the sidecar. <laughs> yeah. It's your motorcycle, but I make you sit in the sidecar. <laughs> exactly. Mike, go faster. And you're like, yeah. <laughs> Mike, slow down. <laughs> Shut <laughs> up, Tahoe <Tahojo>. Joe. <laughs> We've got to pick up more Girl Scout co- cookies for the community. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I need Thin Mint Stat. They, uh, yeah, so this guy, he was the laziest uh, when it came to that. It was hilarious. He actually took pictures of the Girl Scout cookies, posted uh-huh. them on a on a poster board in the laundry room, and had his phone number. Call me if you want cookies. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that wow. That real sketchy. Yeah, he was just like, I'm not going around in public with this. I'm just, if you want them, here's where they are. You know? Yeah. <laughs> Knock on my door four times. So wait, it was a guy selling them? barely yeah he's a father single dad he was like yeah he was selling <laughs> he was a single dad but he was just he had the pictures of the cookies and the phone number and his apartment number <laughs> like should, call or knock they should, they should have specific girl scout cookies for single dads to sell <laughs> yeah. you know they just have a picture of him depressed on the box <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. just drinking coffee in a diner alone <laughs> with one of his various motorcycles <laughs> yeah. uh, parked up front Single dad Girl Scout cookies. Please buy them so he doesn't do anything rash. Yeah. Now with peanut butter. Just him signing his divorce papers with yeah. a, a bunch of thin mints. He was one of those guys, I, every time I'd see him, I would be like, and I hate, I'd hate to say this, but I just didn't, I would always sort of avoid him. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, oh, that guy. Because he just kind of came across as like making up for something. So he was always friendly, but kind of arrogant and cocky. And I was just like, you know, the, the few interactions I had with them, like, after that was pretty pleasant. Like, we'd be in the elevator, and he'd have, like, a date or something, and I'd be like, how's it going? And he that's when he'd be friendly, usually when he was with someone, like, hey, how's it going? 
But when he was by himself, I was like, I don't want to be around this guy. Like, you know. Yeah. But um. Yeah, that that would get old. You ever have neighbors like that where you're, you um, you you want to, you just be friendly and just, but you don't want to like engage too much. I'm like that with all of my neighbors, honestly. Oh. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. they're they're nice people and everything, but they're all like family people, and I'm like a single dude, so it's kind of. So uh, eventually they're going to ask you to do there. favors and stuff. Hey, Mike, you're single. Uh, can you keep an eye on our dogs and cats and water our plants? And Right. Like, yeah. And like, uh, just, I, I don't do a lot of entertaining either at, like at my place. I'd rather just like have my space be my space. And, uh, you know, did I lose you? No, no, no. I, I hit mute. Oh, real okay. Quick to... oh, okay. Do your thing. My, he well, hit mute real I was just curious. I'm like, wow, I wonder if your voice is a lot clearer if I hit mute. So, but it's not, it doesn't work because in the interaction. Right. Yeah. I don't know. Cause you know, like when someone's talking, you kind of want someone in the background going, Oh, uh-huh. Uh -huh. I mean, Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And then when it's just super silent, sure. You sound louder, but you're like, yeah, but I was like, oh, do I, uh, yeah, it sounds weird. like we lost each yeah. other, but yeah. So, anyways, yeah, I was. I remember seeing something that once on um, on a, online. This guy was giving tips, and he's like, he goes, as a, as a former police officer, well, he like he had all these different jobs he did, and he goes, I've lived in like you know twenty four different neighborhoods, whatever. He said, he Jesus. said, yeah, he said that the uh, some of the the deadliest crimes or or domestic violence is between neighbors. And uh, he opened, oh, yeah. yeah, he opened it up with like a little video of that happening, where there are two people just yelling at each other over the property line and the tree or whatever it was. And he goes, "I can just tell you, he goes, I'm very friendly, blah blah blah. But when it comes to neighbors, he goes, I'm not doing any barbecues. I'm not doing any getting together. He goes, I'm just not going to do that. He's like, I'll I'll wave and say hi, but that's as far as I go. I'm not trying to." Because sometimes those things turn, and now your place of what you just said, like your place of comfort, your space, your, your, you know, you're finally I can home. Now you're all like you're getting that knot in your stomach when you're coming down your own street, and you're like, oh gosh, are they going to be out there? So right. I thought that's great, great advice. Yeah, like I, I even when it comes to like petty stuff, I try not to worry too much. Like for the longest time, and I think their kids just grew out of it, but. My neighbors, I guess they were getting amazing deals on balloon castles. Oh, yeah. But the the power cord that they needed set it up in such a way where I literally had to smash into the balloon castle to get out of my apartment. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I could, be a, wow. I could be a dick about this and be yeah. like, hey, guys, you know, move the balloon castle or whatever. But I was like, it's not, it's really not worth it to you, get into a big fight. Uh, Cause now all of a sudden you're the guy that ruined uh, Kyle's yeah. birthday or whatever. You when, know. when you say smash, you mean like not with your, with your car or your... no, I mean like I would open my door oh, and there's squeeze a by little it. staircase that leads down. But at the edge, at the edge of that, it, the balloon castle is like pushed up against it. So I would have oh. to like mush my way through through to get out oh and, yeah yeah and the and the kids were would look at me like are you coming in the balloon test i was like no i'm just trying to get to a, a commercial audition yeah <laughs> sir know? you have to take your shoes off before you go into the balloon and castle they, i'm yeah, trying to like, get I to work the, i know the rules natalie just you know i'm trying to make it in this town i don't have time to relax in a balloon <laughs> castle <laughs> one day i'll have a real castle <laughs> yeah. and none of you will be invited <laughs> Man, I wish they had balloon castles when we were kids. Like that would have been so fun to see something like that. You know, those big old oh, bounce yeah. houses and stuff. Well, they had kind of that. They had a thing in Colorado. We had a couple of places that were crazy, like Chuck E. Cheese type places, but bigger. There was one in Cinderella City Shopping Center called uh, Funtastic. Oh, cool! And it was like a giant maze. And there was the world's largest teddy bear was in there, and I'm sure it got peed on every day. Ooh, I was just gonna say <laughs> you know. uh, when you the first part when you said the world's largest, I was gonna be like, oh, was that your nickname, Mike? <laughs> no, that was not. <laughs> yeah, I'm the world's largest teddy bear. No, I was <laughs> even as a kid, I was not cuddly, but um, 
yeah, but there was all sorts of fun. Like there was a room that just had black light in it, stuff like that. You know, uh, oh, a that's cave. Cool. Remember, and, slide, and blacklight was such a cool thing when you were a kid, like glow-in-the-dark stuff, anything like glow-in-the-dark shirts, yeah. glow-in-the-dark frisbees. Well, they had like a wall that I thought was, as a kid, I thought it was amazing, but it was a wall that was basically made out of glow-in-the-dark material, and they would shine a really bright light in the room, and then uh, you would go up against the wall and like make a shadow and then the lights would turn out and you would see it like the silhouette glowing around you. Oh, wow. And so it was really cool. And then I saw some like video about atomic bombs that that happened to actual people where like Whoa. their silhouette, the blast was so powerful that their silhouette was like grafted onto the buildings. <laughs> and after that, it kind of weirded me out. You're like, eh, that's what you get. Yeah, for, like, that's what you get for learning, Mike. I was like, this isn't as fun as it used to be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but they had like the big pool of balls. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. You know, sounds a lot worse than it is. But um, yeah, I, I used to really dig stuff like that. If the gym was actually that, I would be more inclined to go to the gym. If oh, it yeah. Was, like, climbing around in tunnels and caves and stuff like that, and, uh, doing jumping into a big ball pit, you know, <laughs> I would go to that gym. Man, it's funny. You, you described that as a kid. You know what we had in Fresno? We had a place called um, Pizza and Pipes. <laughs> okay. Did you ever, did, you guys didn't have that, did you? No, no. So the big attraction was that there was a giant organ that would, that would be playing organ music as you're eating pizza. <clears throat> oh, okay. And apparently they, I think they were just mostly California or like the West Coast, but um, I just looked this up right now. It said the most famous person to play that organ was none other than Albert Hayes Molet, best known for setting the Lord's Prayer to music. Oh, <laughs> so, I bet he was fun at parties. Exactly. Our Father who art in heaven, <laughs> hallowed be thy name. <laughs> yeah, exactly. To organ. <laughs> Oh, yes. He says, like, the main it's chamber. It's like when you're at a party and you're like, what do you do? I'm a cop. Oh, fuck. <laughs> exactly. Oh, yeah. the party's over, everybody. It's I work at the local home. mortuary. But it's like, yeah. oh. <laughs> I also have a side business called Pizza and Pipes. Yes. I do dentistry on the side. Oh, gosh. we gotta, let's, let's hang out. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. that. Um, no, we had uh, a place in Colorado in Aurora called Crystal's Pizza Palace. And it was a humongous mansion. Uh, I guess everything's humongous when you're a kid, but I saw it <laughs> as an adult and I was like, this thing is huge. And they like, it's one of those properties, it closed down, but now they have no idea what to do with it. Mm. But in its prime, it was this humongous mansion filled with, it was kind of before video games really took hold but it was all sorts of like clowns and juggling and puppets and, you know, crazy crap yeah. and pizza, <laughs> you know, and they had an organ in there. And I remember thinking, this is the best place in the world. This is going to be around forever. And it closed like oh. five years later. It's, I'm sure it took a lot to keep the doors open. By the way, I just and found then, a pizza and, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, you add anything to the word pizza and it's going to be good, right? Pizza and pipes, pizza castle, pe you know, you could put a rat yeah. in there. <laughs> like, like, yeah, Chuck E. Chuck Cheese. Chuck E. Cheese, it's like. That was, yeah. You know, kids were all for, uh, Chuck E. Cheese was so fun. Like the evolution in Colorado was there was a place called Straw Hat Pizza. Oh yeah, I love that vibe. And they had like a couple video games and stuff and, you know pizza and that was it and then the showbiz pizza happened which had all the animatronic uh like the the bumpkin sort of bear yeah 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 played the banjo and uh there was a lion that was an elvis impersonator Do you remember oh that? that's cool and get it he's the king yeah the king that was him and uh, king of the jungle waiver then they kind of merged with Chuck E. cheese who had you know, Chucky was an animatronic thing, but they had people like go around in costume, 
you know, uh, you know, kind of like Disneyland, but very low budget Disneyland, <laughs> you know, but they had like a ton of video games and that was about as good as being a kid got. That was, that was like going to Vegas for a kid, yeah. <laughs> oh, going yeah. to Chuck e. Cheese, you know, see, and, uh, yeah, yeah. See, yeah. Hmm. We had Blackbeards. Like in Fresno, great. we had Blackbeards. And it was like a mini- miniature golf. <laughs> it's, just a guy. it's just a guy. Yeah, just a guy. <laughs> he makes you pizza rolls in his apartment. Yeah. Tell him you had a great time at Blackbeards. At Blackbeards. I got to dye my beard every Friday night. Get ready for the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have peanut butter and jelly, kid. I have. Uh, I, can, I can get you some Nutella and Melba toast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Turns out, I just saw this. There's a Facebook group called Pizza and Pipes, and it's all people writing down their memories of pizza. And, you know, this this one guy he writes, uh, "I went to the 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 Campbell location in the 1970s. I remember my mom giving me tip money to request the Star Wars theme song from the organist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> that would be a fun song to hear while you're eating pizza. Yeah, see, I knew I I knew I'd hook you in." Yeah, I'm still not going to Fresno to, <laughs> to, go, to for go to pizza, pizza and pipes. But and then, and, yeah. How was the pizza? Do you remember? Um, I don't remember because the organ is what really is, you go there for the organ. I'm sure it was good, but like my favorite growing up was <laughs> was me and Ed's. Me and Ed's. Yeah, me and Ed's. Like Ed, like your friend named Ed. Like it's me and Ed's, and I still, I always, I loved me and Ed's up until recently, man. I. I don't know. During the pandemic, I I go to like a couple different me and Eds, and I'm like, it just isn't the same. I don't know what's happening. I don't know if the staff making the well, pizza isn't the same. The or, pandemic is happening. It, yeah. You know. Although there, uh, were, yeah, there was another place we'd go to called Boston Pizza, Boston House of Pizza, and that was really good. Is Boston known for its pizza? Um, I don't know. That's what's weird, right? Like, <laughs> and then the locations are like. They're out in the country. They're not even like. The, there was a place. Maybe you guys had them for a while, called Rocky Rococo's Pizza. I don't remember. And it the the logo, it looked like Sean Penn wearing a disguise. <laughs> That's funny. And it was like a bit too much for Colorado because like they opened up. I remember they're like coming soon. Rocky Rocco's Pizza. You could tell and, it's Sean Penn and, in disguise by his checkered and, vans. Yeah, and everyone in Colorado would look at that sign like it was a turd. They they're like, "What?" Ugh. And then it closed down like six weeks later. Oh, it's hilarious! <laughs> like people just weren't ready for Rocky Rocco. I love how people get all excited when a new restaurant comes to town. Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, like, oh boy, we're finally gonna get Krispy Kreme donuts, and there's like a line around the block. Yeah, and like back when people gave directions to each other, like you'd stop and ask for directions, you could tell what the town was proud of because they'd be <laughs> like, now that's six blocks from the new McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. know. Like they were real into it. You know? Or when they give you directions on where something used to be, you know, where the Burger King <laughs> yeah. used to be, you're like, well, I don't, I'm not there anymore. I don't even, I'm not. Fr- <laughs> yeah, I don't live here. I don't know where the. I just got off a plane an hour ago. I don't know where. <laughs> The whole reason I'm asking you for directions yeah. is because I don't know stuff like that. <laughs> By the way, I was in Provo, Utah last weekend, and man, talk about a uh, dude! It looked like time froze in the 1940s, what, 50s, what's the or big 60s. Team in Provo. Well, I filmed I filmed team. a special. There's these things called dry bar comedy specials, dry or yeah, dry bar comedy, and those those videos, man, they get millions of views, and it's uh, I mean, they really they're like a a machine they they put it out on you know every platform facebook instagram youtube it get millions of views and if a comic wants to work clean and wants to get a special out there that's like okay let me just see if i can do this challenge you do for this one we were doing between 20 and 25 minutes they said you could actually go up to 28 minutes and Mm -hmm. we taped two shows an early show a late show in a little theater that's there and they have all these, you know, the cameras, the audience is mic'd. I mean, they got it down and uh, they even, they've even sprung up and, and have like, you know, co- you know, comedy, you know, they do like these tours, um, dry bar comedy tours, like all over. It's pretty cool, man. It's like a whole like thing that's happening. And, and uh, 
yeah, I thought the same thing at the, oh, Provo, but it's like, that's where the headquarters are. And I went there and it's, uh, man, I got to tell you, it, it looked like time froze, man. It looked really nice. It was, uh, <laughs> it was like in the fifties, the sixties, like that, that, at least the day that I was there, the two days I was there, like everything was really clean. I didn't see any graffiti. I saw, um, all these cool like barber shops and coffee shops. And I mean, I mean, there was like modern, you know, diners and like the food was modern and the people were modern, but as far as like, it looked like a Disney type of vibe, at least the day or two I was there. You know what I mean? Like it was just free parking. Yeah. Like you could park on the street for free. The only thing it would say is like, you know, on a couple of places I saw like, you know, two hour time limit. And it said at the end of two hours, just move your car and put it on a different block. <laughs> you know, they, they, they don't want you just backing up like three inches or whatever. Right. Yeah, that's a, that's a reasonable request. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I remember I used to take an acting class in uh, off uh, off of um, I think Fairfax or somewhere over there, and um, they would mark your they drive by and mark your tires with chalk. Yep. So we would just go like wipe it off. <laughs> you know. Like, yeah. Yeah, you'd wipe it off, or you'd. What I would do is I turn my wheel, my front wheel, toward the curb, so the the front wheel would really stick out, uh-huh. almost like, "Hey, this is the tire you want to mark, big boy." And they'd always mark that tire. <laughs> they'd always mark that. You know, they're they're lazy, man. People are lazy. You know, if you're gonna yeah. stick a tire out, it's like that's the one they're gonna. And then I would just wipe it off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, the whole thing is stupid that, that that you're making plans on how to attract the tire marker and that they're actually marking tires. Yeah, I might like as well that. have a post-it note like this one. This is the one I want you to mark. Yeah, you know? this is this is just dumb. I know, but but yeah, but if you got one of those tickets, it was like you're looking at like sixty, seventy bucks. I know. You know, if you got like a parking ticket back then and for a broke actor and they knew who they were doing it. I know. Uh, that's a lot of money. You, a lot of people were like, well, I guess I have to move back to Vermont or whatever, you know, because yeah. I don't have 70 bucks. And, and then that, you know, yeah, it can add up and you're like, next thing you know, yeah. you're like in debt. Yeah, if over... you hit three auditions a day and you have to jump through 50 flaming hoops to park. Oh. Uh, yeah, that was a nightmare. I know. Although now it's all, you know, self tape auditions and I don't know if that's a lot better. <laughs> you know? By you the way, did I uh tape yourself? We uh well I was gonna tell you two things. I, I booked a movie. I don't know if we've talked about that, and I booked a uh it, that, was it a Halloween movie? Oh yeah, we should do some more Halloween talk. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was a it was a movie. It's called Born Again, and it it's uh, the lead is Paul Rodriguez, Gary Busey's in the movie, Edward uh-huh. James Olmos, um, Danny Trejo, Jay Moore, uh, Daisy Duke, Catherine Bach is in the movie. Um, yeah, Emilio Rivera. He was the leader of the Mayans. If you watch that oh, okay. uh, that motorcycle, There's, I'm probably leaving out a lot of actors as well. But it was, uh, yeah, it's cool. The the main character Paul Rodriguez, his character is in. It opens up with they're in prison and he's about to get out. And I'm the lead correction officer. And uh, dude, I got to see the trailer. And I'm the minute it starts, I'm in there. They do a close up of my face. I'm in all the openings. It's so cool, Mike. I couldn't believe it. I was like, wow, like. So hopefully they leave that trailer just like that because I'm like, you know, it opens up with me like yelling at the prisoners. And I'm running down there and I'm breaking it up. And Oh, that's very cool. And then it cuts to Paul's character getting his civilian clothes. And mm-hmm. uh, as a joke, we um, we don't give him his real clothes. We give him a priest outfit. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and uh, and then he's like, what is this? And so that's, what the, that's where the movie starts, Born Again, where he, you know, basically pretends to be like a TV preacher. And then, you know... Oh, that's a cool idea. Yeah, it's, yeah, and plus, like you know, like it, it's a, uh, yeah, it was it was really fun and it was great filming it. It's uh, I remember we filmed down in Orange County at a soundstage, and I think my call time was something like six thirty in the morning, and so I was like, well, let me just get there really early. And dude, I don't know if you've driven on the freeways at like five a.m. There's no traffic. Oh yeah, it's great. I think I left at five and I was there by like five thirty. I'm like, wow, this never happens. Like a normal 
world, you'd have to give yourself two hours. Yeah, I had a thing like out kind of in the boonies of Northern California. And I was running late and I was like, I'm not going to make it on time. I'm not going to make it on time. But I realized I was kind of between the morning and lunch rush Mm. and there was no traffic. And I got there exactly on time. And I was like, wow, it really makes a difference how much Mm. traffic can mess with you, you know? That's, that is true. By the way, we got some reviews. I want to new reviews pocket party podcast thank you we asked and we received so thank you pocket by the way if you guys want to get your review read go to itunes go to apple and leave a review give us please if you like the show five stars and a review tell them mike tell them how much it helps yeah it helps a whole lot it sure does. I was hoping you'd, I was going to try to drink some water as you were talking. <laughs> yeah. Take it uh, away, Mike. It really helps a lot to uh, leave, not not just a review, but leave a comment to of some kind. Uh, that helps all the algorithms and logarithms, all the rhythms. Oh, yeah. Helps. Rhythm of the night. Uh, yeah. It, it, it helps the lambada, all of it. Um, yeah. It's, it's just really good. It's a good way of supporting without having to, you know, uh, give us any money. Basically, you can just support very much by by doing that, you know. All right, here we go. Thank you so much. Here we go. This is from Uptown Strange. They write, it's 3.55 and I can't sleep. Love the podcast. Heaters. Love it. <laughs> the next one is from Fig90. Legit pocket party. Darren Carter has one of the kindest spirits, is one of the most legit performers. The man is a self-party starter, has the best collection of friends and experiences upon which to draw upon. If I had to describe him in one word, that it's friendly. The man writes, produces, and delivers. I remember seeing him perform at the Beverly Hills Friars Club on a Ari David show, and I met my best friend in comedy. Mr. James Price, J.R. Fat James who was on the show but was too fat to take the steps, so we took our chances on the elevator. And it was one of the funniest shows I've ever went to. Darren, by the way, I have not read this yet. I only read the first part. And it was one of the funniest shows I ever went to. Darren Carter is someone you can share his catalog of work to a friend, and your friend will thank you for it. That is so nice. What was this person's name? Fig90. Oh, okay. We need more guys like Darren Carter in comedy but there is only one so you better recognize also he is a great character actor and his time is going to come because the man has put in the work and dispenses original comedy and he makes it look easy and it ain't cheers well fig, that, fig 90 thank you fig 90 yeah that was awesome because uh i remember james price uh fat james he was called or chips he had a few yeah the man of many names he was a uh, a uh, doo-wop singer, an Elvis impersonator, uh, Steve Simone's notorious roommate. Uh, <laughs> he, uh, he, but he was he was a real character and a real original. And um, I loved him, man. Also, I, I, I remember he had the pompadour and, and the yeah. He was always yeah. friendly. I think, I, oh, man, he, yeah. he worked a lot at the comedy store for a long time there, and he was one of those guys that he would give you the shirt off his back. All you had to do was ask. And like, I I was doing a lot of road work and he told me one day, he was like, if you ever need a ride from the airport, just let me know, you know? And, uh, my mom used to work for United and would fly out every now and again to visit. And one time she came to the store and made him, uh, some tacos and and brought them to him you know just for working the lot and he never forgot it he was like say hi to your mom for me every day you know like but he he was a real sweetheart he he passed way too soon but uh i just it was cool that they mentioned his name i know and i found out later um through steve simone i guess he was a huge elvis presley fan huge yeah i wish i would have known that you know but um yeah you know you you get to know different things yeah a lot of people who we've lost not to get too down but like you hear some little thing about them and you're like oh i wish i'd 
taking the time to get to know them better, you know? Yeah. They, um, yeah, like that guy, I remember I told you on the previous episode, it was his birthday and I was at that restaurant and he turned 103. Yeah. It was actually pretty interesting. It was that, that's the thing. Maybe that guy is like, I'm not waiting until my obituary comes out. I'm dropping knowledge now. Because <laughs> that yeah. guy was like, I fought under Patton. They call me Bazooka Joe. I, my bazooka took down, you know, and he just goes on and on. And then he op- I opened right. two theaters. <laughs> he was just telling me all this information. I got a golden <laughs> ticket. I can see any movie at any time. <laughs> I, I ate the first Campbell's soup can. You know. Yeah. And I told my wife all that. And she was funny. She goes, gosh, that guy brags a lot. <laughs> <laughs> she goes i wonder if he was like that when he was like younger like or is it i go i don't know but maybe there's something happening when you reach 103 you're like you know what i'm i'm, I'm laying it all out there you, you know? know what that's all he's got at 103 you, you know yeah. you gotta toot your own horn a little bit you know? yeah i know i mean that's hey listen i'm sitting here reading podcast reviews about you know, myself on the but right. but i want to encourage yeah. people like if you guys wanted to you, you could anywhere in there you could say you know, I love the show, blah, 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 signed. And you could put your, you know, your Instagram handle, your whatever. So you, <laughs> like, I don't mind. I'll plug you guys. You guys, It's a, we're a, uh, yeah, it's a reciprocal sort of reciprocal thing. Reciprocal you know? situation here, man. Like, a, we're family. You know what I mean? Like, you, you keep us motivated and we keep you guys entertained, hopefully. And, you know, I, I love it. I don't see, like I said, my computer's in the shop, so I have to use my iPad to read those two reviews. But um, <laughs> if, I, if, I, if I could, I would have. Pulled up real quick the uh, some of the comments lately on the YouTube channel. Darren Carter on YouTube, D-A-R-R-E-N. People are like, hey, you know, I missed you guys. I'm so glad because we took a week off. I'm glad you guys are back. Da, da, da. It's like, I love reading stuff like that. It just lets you know Let people, me, you know. Uh, you keep, t- now it's your turn to stall them. Okay. Uh, you keep talking. I'm going to see if I can pull up your YouTube. I'll stall them. Just look at any of the Pocket Party podcast uh, episodes. If you go to the comment section, you could read some of those comments that people have left and uh you know i'll talk a little bit about the special if there's any comedians or up-and-coming comedians out there it was the first time in a long time that i actually made a set list you know where i actually wrote down i want to make sure i say these jokes these stories because usually when i perform i'm just freestyling up there i i kind of know i'm going to open up with this and i sort of know i'm going to go in this area about you know i'm going to do some stuff about my wife and some stories And then I'll maybe go down this road. And the next thing you know, I'm talking a little bit about my son. And then maybe I'll go over here and talk about, you know, um, health oh, and fitness. Uh, hey, and, 10 yeah. comments on your last episode. Oh, yeah. cool. Lay, okay. lay out a couple other comments. Uh, I'm going to hit mute so, so they can really hear you really well. Go to, ahead. To, do you want me to do it or not? Oh, yeah. Go, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I, I'm going to hit mute so there won't be any background noise. But I'm still here listening. Okay. Uh, Tobias Kebercazito, Kebercazito, uh, writes, missed you guys, uh, 100% Canadian bacon. Uh, to be clear, guys, I listen to the old episodes on a playlist when I'm done watching TV and ready for bed. And I listen to the newer ones at least two times all the way through. But today I'm listening to, uh, today I'm listening to it waking up. Trust me. I noticed the two week gap in programming. But I also noticed the shorts you put out are getting huge. So your live shows are still pulling in new YouTube fans. Booyah, oh, baby. Oh, baby. Thank you, man. Thanks for noticing. I, I, I always wonder, does anyone care? Does anyone notice? Thank you, man. That means a lot. Well, uh, let's see. Drew Hillman, a great episode of the podcast. Kept it short and sweet. Uh, 100% Canadian Maple. I want to get his whole name, but it, it cuts off. Yeah. Oh, he literally wrote O A K K K K K K K K K K K K. Love it. I've been waiting for this all week. Freaks. I've been waiting for this all week, freaks. It cut off a little early. Yeah. Darren, come back to the Oakland area from Andrew B. So that that was all of them. Oh, cool. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, man. Thank you, guys. Mike, I, uh, if this thing blows up, man, wouldn't that be cool? Like, we're, we could actually like start making appearances, you know? Like, oh yeah. We, I mean, we did one. We did one at Burbank at the at Flappers. That was like a little teaser to see what it would be like. I mean, I. What's great about that is, uh, not only do we do stand up, I kind of like how you and I interacted. Like, we were on stage and we kind of prompt each other. Like, you, you know. And that yeah, was it was fun a, to kind of yeah. Just, 
get up there and rip a little bit together, you know. Right. And like, uh, you were, I remember when I was on stage, you were like, Darren, tell us about your, your original name. And I was thinking like, oh, he wants me to do like my jokes. Like, you know, like I'm not, I'm not Darren, I'm Daron or, or, you know, oh, Dar- right. Darren Carter. I grew up in a Latino neighborhood. Jose Andres Luis and me, Darren, Darren Carter, AKA Darren Carter. And then you were like, no, 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 the original. And I was like, the original. And then I was like, boom, then the light bulb hit. I'm like, oh, wow, he wants me to go there. <laughs> it was yeah. like, and it was funny because on the podcast, um, I'd mentioned to him that, you know, I'm, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> I mentioned to him that I was adopted and grew up in a foster home. And originally my name was not Darren Carter. And uh, I was, you know. <laughs> what was your original name? Well, <laughs> I'll tell you. It's like I was conceived on a biker run. My my father was uh, in a notorious motorcycle club, and it was they they were on Can a bike. Can you name the, the yeah? It was it was uh, they were known as the Hell's Angels. You could oh, I've heard of that. Ever, you guys can look this up. This is fact. Um, go to YouTube. You could see my father in an interview, and uh, with Peter Jennings, I think interviewed him and stuff in the '60s. But yeah, they were on a biker run, Lake Tahoe. Uh, that's where I was conceived. And then nine months later, I was born in June. And my name was going to be Tahoe Joe. <laughs> Tahoe Joe. And I, and I had a belt that had the word Tahoe Joe up until I was about eight years old. You know? Oh, you got to get a new belt that has I know. A, a big Tahoe Joe belt buckle on it. I know. It's funny because when you said that, it's that's what's great about being comedians as long as we've been doing it. We're... You know, we're still uh, we're we're uncomfortable, but yet comfortable. If that makes sense, like I was uncomfortable because yeah. I was like, "Oh well, I've never said this out loud on a microphone in front of a group of people." But let's do it. <laughs> but then the the comedian part of me that's comfortable with that. Well, let's make it funny. And I go, I and I go, you know, guys, if I was if my name really was Tahoe Joe, I think this would be a completely different show. It'd be like, come on down, <laughs> check out Tahoe Joe. He does twelve different types of whistling. <laughs> you know, <There's>, well, <laughs> or the, there'd be like pole dancers on, yeah, exactly. on the sides of the stage and like uh, maybe someone who does like a fire breathing act or something. Yeah. I just picture Ladies my and gentlemen, Tahoe Joe. <laughs> he's wearing leather fringe and a coonskin cap. Yeah. <laughs> Part of your show would be like firing off six guns you know, yeah. into the sky. Pew, pew. <laughs> You know, like uh, twirling them and stuff, doing all sorts of things. Did I remember? Like, I know, right? Tricks. I remember the day I uh, I called my my real father. You know, I had uh, God rest his soul. He passed away um, oh, this yeah. summer, but um, you know, it was about twenty years ago. And I thought, you know, I I you know how you have those things that you're like, well, one day I'll do it. You know, whatever that thing is, one sure. one, one day I'll I'll do it one day. Well, that that day was coming up because my my mother had passed away, and um, and uh, I only met her. Well, I knew her when I was a kid. I get to do the the bi monthly visits every other weekend, and then until I was around seven or eight, you know, nine somewhere in there, maybe and ten, maybe ten, <laughs> maybe ten. I know, right? And then uh, I saw. Her, I, no, no, you it was way younger. It was, it was definitely eight or nine. That they age, twelve. No, sure. no, it wasn't wasn't twelve, but <laughs> and but I saw her twice. Thirteen, that would be no. Oh, that would be th- oh, that would be crazy. Eighth grade, no, 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 no. It was definitely elementary 14, school. Maybe no, no. But I knew her parents, my grandparents. That's the real family that I had. Like I knew, and which is really <laughs> really wild about that is we lived about three miles away. So every now and then, my foster mom would drive down, you know, McKinley. This is this is a street or Cedar, and. Yeah. I would be like my grandma, my and I'd always look over there, and then she, and then I remember, you know, I had a really messed up foster mom, and she used to get pissed that I would even bring them up or talk about that, or so then she would totally avoid yeah. that part of town, like so I wouldn't be looking over there, you know. Oh, man. I know, yeah. dude, it sucked, man. It's uh, yeah. It's like I get it from her perspective, but at the same time, it's like that's not cool. Yeah, it's like you know, um, and I I remember when she, you know, I saw her twice, my real mom twice, uh. When I was 23 at Thanksgiving, she came back, and then I saw her when I and, and then I saw her at my grandmother's funeral, like uh, six months later. Mm-hmm. So imagine you see someone when you're a child, and then you don't see him, and then you see him twice when you know within a six month period, 
and then I never saw her again. And when she passed away, that's when I was like, wow, I've I've only got one living parent. I better look him up. Yeah. And I, you know, I knew I could find him. At least I thought I could because he was sort of a well-known figure in Fresno and he had a personalized license plate. And back then, this is, this is, <laughs> this is before... Yeah, this is before. Yeah, he was the organist at Pizza and Pipes. It all comes back together. No. Yeah. Wait, can I ask what was his personalized license? Yeah, his name, Elvin Ray. That was his license plate, was his name. Yeah, Elvin Ray. That's hardcore. Yeah. And uh, that'd be funny if the pipes were more like a Harley Davidson. Like, <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> Y'all eat your pizza. <laughs> yeah. Hey, yeah. So yeah, I looked him up in the phone book, man, and uh, he was in there. Wow. And I called the number, and it was a landline. This is uh, early two thousands, before like, you know, the internet really blew up and cell phones and stuff like that. Sure. No, no social media back then. And his buddy answered the phone, and his buddy actually knew who my mom was. Like, what was his buddy's name? It might have been Blind Bob, but I'm not sure. Like, <laughs> like they had these kind of names like that. Oh yeah, Pete the Greek, Blind Bob, stuff like that. And uh, I think at that time he was yeah in his 60s. And um, Pete the Greek, Blind Bob, and Elvin Ray. They were part of Elvin Ray's crew. Yeah, I think they called him E Ray. E Ray. You know, he had these kind of nicknames and stuff. But uh, Elvin Ray. But yeah, they yeah, or Elvin. But uh, you know, it's funny. Like I think some German company did a documentary and stuff on him, and I, I got to look at that. I got that's another thing. See, you talk about things you got to look up. I got to look that up. But um, yeah, they uh, <clears throat> Life Magazine has some photos of him. They they there was a guy un, unrelated. There was a photographer named something Ray. I forget his his first name. And if you uh -huh. look that up, you'll see like there was a biker run, and there's some great photos of them like at the you know yeah ray was a very popular name for that generation yeah you know? at the yeah as as like a second name there were a lot of billy rays and there was sugar ray leonard sugar ray robinson oh yeah uh, it just it was a very popular middle name ray ray <laughs> yeah the, yeah but yeah I, I looked him up in the phone book and i i remember my my mother-in-law god rest her soul very encouraging she said something so sweet to me because I was very nervous, man. I was nervous to call. I mean, imagine you're calling your dad, right? Like, yeah. <clears throat> and she said, "You know what? You're a wonderful person, and if he doesn't want to have anything to do with you, it's his loss." In so many words, yep. she said something long, longer than that. But that was basically the gist of it. So I remember, you know, I went off by myself the back bedroom. I my heart was pounding, and I'm like, "Okay, I'm gonna make this phone call." And I called, and the, his buddy answered. He goes, "Oh, he'll be. He'd love to hear from you. He'll be back in about an hour." I was like, oh, man. So, you know, he came back and I called or he called me. I forget how it went down. I Maybe I called. And, uh, you know, we we talked. We spoke for about 90 minutes. And I told him I was in town to do a comedy show. And we, were, we, we the, the plan was we were to um, have, <clears throat> excuse me, have lunch. Mm -hmm. And uh, But he was so excited to meet me. He didn't want to wait till lunch. He ended up showing, coming into the comedy show. Oh, that's cool. It was cool in hindsight. In the moment, I was on stage, and I'm looking, and I'm out there looking at the crowd. Most of the crowd was in their 20s and 30s and 40s. And then there was these two biker-looking dudes that looked like members of ZZ Top. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I think I made a joke like that. And I'm like, hey. And then, and then as I'm making the joke, I realize, holy cow. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. That's who I think it is. That's like me in a mirror, except if I was you know, older oh, and had man. a beard. Yeah, it was a trip, dude. And bigger. He was 6'4". Oh, and, he was tall. He was yeah, a big dude. yeah, tall, and um, all his kids are. He had like other children too. Like I've, you know, through the years, I met some of his other sons. They're even bigger than him, or you know, weight wise, height wise. It was really wild, you know. And they, um, but friendly, like that friendly vibe, you know. Um, anyways, we he, he had like an old car, like a nineteen forty six uh, Chevy Starline, I think it was, but um. Could be wrong about that, but <clears throat> anyways, they uh, that was a that was a great day, and it was it was great to meet him, and great to 
You know, it's kind of funny. What do you call someone? Because I didn't really know what to call him. And uh, I think after a few phone calls, he's like, uh, he's like, yeah, just, he goes, call me Pops. And so I, so I always <laughs> called him Pops, which is, you know what I mean? Because I felt kind of weird. Yeah. I'm like, I don't, I don't know about dad. I don't know about father. Like, we're just kind of getting to know each other again. And he was always, always um, sort of apologetic and, uh, Son, there's nothing we can do to change the past, but let's just move forward, onward and upward. And, you know, I think about you every day. He would always say nice things like that. It was just really. Oh, you know, that's good. Yeah, it was cool. And at the it's time. It's good that you guys did all that before he passed, you know. Yeah. Because yeah. imagine not knowing that part. You know, I know. How it, terrible that would be, you know, if you'd missed out completely, you know. Yeah, there was a there's a lot of kids that have that. that I think about that. I think about that all the time when I hear about other kids that grew up in a foster home. I was really lucky to know my mother's side of the family, and then eventually my I got to meet my dad. But I knew my mother's side of the family like a lot, like my grandparents, my aunts, my uncles, you know. And yeah. uh, when I turned eighteen or nineteen, I moved out. Boom, moved right back in with my grandparents. Almost like, well, that was weird. Hey, how you guys been? It's been. A, hey, I'll tell you, it's been a tough sixteen years. I'm back though, you know. Yeah. Yeah. My grandfather and I, we had a really great relationship. I, you know, I used to go up to Fresno and especially on Sundays, we'd go play pool. You know, I'd take him to this local billiard place. I'd grab a coffee. We'd shoot some pool. Like, that's what we had in common together. It was really fun to, like, you know, have some sort of activity. And that's what I do with my own son. You know, we, you know, a, a friend of mine told me great advice. He said, if do activities with your, your children and you'll, and as they get older, they'll want to do those activities with you whether it's yeah you know like i've never been a football guy i'm never like let's go watch the you know the raiders or the rams or the broncos i'm like this isn't my thing I, i'll watch it on tv like you know i'll watch a couple plays but i'm not i'm not like a football yeah. guy the truth is it doesn't matter it's it, it take them to share with them whatever you like and even if they're not crazy about it they'll be happy spending time with you yeah, you know. it does make it better when you put like my son. Like we always go, you know, hiking or we go for walks or we go do push ups, pull ups, swimming, bike rides. Like very active. Like I love stuff like, like that. You yeah, know? And, and he likes it too. He doesn't resist. I'm like, like this morning he told me because I, I told him, you know, I you know usually at night he'll do his push ups. Right, we'll go down, we'll go we'll go swimming or whatever. And uh, I'm like, hey, did you do your push ups today? And he's like, not yet. I go, can you give me twenty five? And he's like, you got it, sir. <laughs> he falls into like calling me sir. Like I'm, but it's fun though. He likes it. Right. And then, uh, then I'll yeah. have him walk around the pool. I'm like, okay, give me 10. Then he'll do 10. Then at, at one point he'll be like at, you know, 70. And I go, you know, you're getting real close to a hundred. I go, let's, let's, uh, so then we'll swim for a while. Then he'll hop out. Next thing you know, he's done a hundred. So this morning before he went to school, he, uh, it was called barbecue. De they have these great themes at their school. Like, Yesterday was either dressed like a toddler or an old man. <laughs> so, <laughs> so he wore like a, a Hawaiian shirt and he had like this wig, this this uh, gray haired wig, but it kind of looked like a surfer because the, the white hair kind of looked blonde. And uh, the Hawaiian shirt, I go, dude, you look like you work at Trader Joe's. <laughs> 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 but this morning before he went out, he showed me his, today the theme was barbecue dad. And it was like plaid shirt and he had like a bucket hat like Gilligan might wear. <laughs> and, uh, he, he actually looked like little, you know, t like little daddy. You know, like he looks like me, dude. That's how I dress. You know, the, yeah. But before he went, I said, "All right, have a great day, son." And he's, "Oh, by the way, dad, I've already done twenty-five push-ups." I'm like, oh, "Man, that made me proud." I was like, "Yeah." That's really cool. I know it's cool, man. It's cool. Now, do you guys uh, just to bring it back around? Do you guys yeah. uh, celebrate Halloween? We do. We do celebrate Halloween. We like to, um, you know, one year we went to, thanks for bringing it back around, by the way. I'm sorry I got sidetracked. <laughs> yeah. No, they, no. They, um, yeah, we go to, uh, one year we got so, we, we used to um, go to Toluca Lake. We went there a few years. It's a, Toluca, if you ever go to, if anyone's listening, you go to like Toluca Lake. Um, it's a lot of people in the industry live in that na those neighborhoods. It's a really rich area. Bob Hope, yeah. you know, had a home there for years, right off of Ledge. You can look it up. And one year, when my son was about three, I think 
there's this long driveway and there was a security guard that worked for the family at the end of the, at the very front of the driveway and they would give you um gifts from the bob hope family and they we had like a, some playing cards that said from bob, the bob hope fa- family oh nice yeah and, and and so like people that are in like special effects like they go full man they go all out here in, in southern california like you know like full on like basically like a haunted house that's set up in front of their own house you know now your son obviously <laughs> does kind of costume sort of stuff did you guys ever do like themed costumes no, not all together. Usually, usually I don't really dress up, but he'll dress up like uh, different rock stars or different. Um, what was one of your favorites for him? Yeah, uh, I would like that. You were like, oh, that one's it, when he dressed like Rick Astley from the video, like the, with the white uh, pants. Yeah, and the, I think I saw that one. Yeah, and then he had like the fake microphone he carried around, and plus, never gonna give you up, never gonna, you know. Plus, it's kind of has a special meaning for us because that was one of his videos he put on YouTube that got like over two million views, where he's playing, you know, that Rick Roll song. Wow. And I know. I was like, wow, you know, that was so cool. And uh, I remember as a kid, I dressed up once, and when I was about eight. I dressed up like the mummy. My mom had made a, uh, you know, she she shredded a be- uh, bed sheet, and so like I'm getting wrapped up with like this bed sheet of, you know, to look like a mummy. But it was interesting. The um, she did not wrap the zipper area <laughs> in case I had <laughs> okay. to like pull my flight down and use a restroom, and she did right. not, of course, obviously that where you could look out. So. Uh, and I, I remember, so just these Buddy Holly... Oh, smart planning on her part. Yeah, all you'd see was these Buddy Holly glasses, <laughs> these black frame glasses, and then like this, this zipper area. Like, <laughs> I probably like the world's smallest pervert or something. Yeah, like, yeah, I, was say this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know what he's dressed as, but it's scary as hell. Yeah, what's he getting rid of the whip out? <laughs> I see you, but you can't see me. That pervert was in the burn unit or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We don't know what happened to him. Do you have a favorite costume that you wear these days? Oh, not these days. Uh, I'm. This has already happened, so I can kind of let the cat out of the bag. But I'm uh, planning on dressing. I'm doing a set, not on Halloween, but on the, the Saturday of Halloween weekend. Oh, cool. And I think think it would be fun because that's i i'm pretty sure that's going to be devil's night Mm. uh to just dress kind of low-key as the devil and do my set like that oh wow devil's night that's what they used to call those parties at harvey weinstein's house is it really no i'm just kidding i that was a joke i wrote for fraser hey oh yeah uh yeah (laughs) not not the connotation i want to go with but um (laughs) No, that's what they used to call it in Detroit. Right. Uh, the night before Halloween, uh, they would set all these big bonfires and stuff. And uh, it was uh, kind of a tradition that just got out of hand. And <laughs> now it's like a whole big crazy thing, you know. And so I figure that's right around Halloween, so that'd be a fun thing to do. What are you going to do to dress up like the devil? I don't know exactly. Uh, I'll figure it out at the costume shop. You know, oh, that's I mean, cool. You know, it depends on how far I want to go with it. <laughs> you know, like, I don't know if I want to do the whole red jumpsuit and, <laughs> you know, right. like, cape and everything. Or I paint your face red. It's a little yeah, funny I'm, port. I'm definitely not going to paint my face red. I think that's just too silly. <laughs> red makeup never works out yeah. from what I've seen on Halloween for anybody, you know. What about like the pitchfork? You know, a little pitchfork? Yeah, I'm thinking of something like that, or you know, uh, the uh, tail with the Arrow. pointy. Yeah, yeah, something kind of subtle. I wonder if there's yeah, like some I, sort of candy or sweets that you could pass out, like devil's eggs, deviled eggs, or something. I'm not <laughs> passing out deviled eggs at the comedy store. I'd, I'd like to go there again sometime. <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll figure this out on my own. Darren. Okay, your ideas okay. are <laughs> terrible. <laughs> hey, paint your face red and pan out devil eggs. <laughs> I've been in the kitchen for four I don't hours. Even explain that I'm the devil. I just everyone's like, "Did you hear what happened?" Like, yeah, he got sunstroke and started passing out devil's eggs. 
that's a comedy story. And yeah. He passed out. And they, yeah. yeah those, and plus, it would kind of smell weird too. You know, the, the whole devil thing. You think <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah. That You're... building just finally got over smelling bad, and that, the last thing they need is someone passing out deviled eggs to the crowd. Oh, I know, dude. I was at a comedy club recently, and they added a new menu item. It was broccoli and oh, uh, God. and Brussels sprouts, and and I could not figure out what that smell <laughs> what was. A terrible. Yeah, I went. In, I walked in the green room. There was about eight guys in there, like that were on the lineup, and it stunk. And I, and then I was like, I walked away, and then a few minutes later. The, I saw the waiter come in with, she goes, the, the waiter was like, hey, how did you like those appetizers? And I looked down and I realized, oh, that's what it was. The Brussels and the bro- broccoli. Yeah. I was like, man, it smells yeah. terrible in here. <laughs> like, yeah, this place smells like a footlocker. Is- <laughs> exactly. I was like, <laughs> yeah, I was like, wow. So yeah, you don't want to be yeah. that guy that's like passing around garlic, you know, or something no. too crazy smelly. Like, No, I would, if I did anything, it would be like just regular Halloween candy, not <laughs> some. <laughs> I I get why you would say devil eggs, but that, what a terrible idea that is. Yeah, that is a terrible idea. I am hungry though right now. And you know what? That's probably what it is. I, I want eggs, uh, uh, and I was uh, like, you devil eggs. Should whip up good. some deviled eggs. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, when I was at that, when I was in Provo, remember, it was kind of like a time machine. The guy next to I ordered like just scrambled eggs and bacon, and the, there was a guy at the counter next to me. He ordered deviled eggs. I didn't even know that was a thing you could order. Yeah. You can order that anyway. It's, I didn't uh, really, really. A- any place that serves breakfast knows how to make them. Wow. Uh, they may not want to, and they may go, "Ah, we don't have that or whatever." But they're yeah. lying. They, they can make them. That was something I used. To, I used to see those like at potlucks or something, or some kind of like church function. Yeah, you you're know? really not missing out. They're not that great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> You can put pepper on a regular egg. <laughs> I know. Well, Mike, I want to thank you for once again doing the Pocket Party podcast. And, uh, oh, yeah. Hopefully this will get uploaded and you guys can hear it. And I thank you for your reviews and your comments. Yeah. And, uh, and let's... if it got loaded up in time, happy Halloween, everybody. Happy Halloween. What's your favorite Halloween song? Uh, probably the Monster Mask. Me too. I think it might be the only Halloween. I was working in the lab late one night. The Monster Mash. Yeah, that one. Or, uh, I don't know. There's a lot of stuff on The Nightmare Before Christmas that's pretty good, too. Yeah, it used to be Thriller. And then I still like, yeah, I still, I still like Thriller, but I, I like that Monster Mash just has that funny, fun kind yeah, of. Yeah, that one's just around. It's an eternal sort of song. You know? <laughs> yeah. All right, Mike. I'll catch you later, buddy. Thank you so much for helping us start that party in your ear holes. You got it, buddy. Later. And that was Mike Black. How fun was that? We covered so much. Tahoe Joe, balloon castles, glow in the dark, pizza and pipes, Chuck E. Cheese, new restaurant lines, foster homes, the whole thing. We went there. We did it. Deviled eggs. All right, guys. Have a great day, and I'll catch you soon. Start that party in your ear holes, and don't hurt nobody. Don't hurt nobody. Be careful. Everybody listen to Darren Carter. We all know he's the party starter. So if you want to listen to a podcast for free, then listen to the Pocket Party.